Hello, everybody. Um, I'm hoping everybody's coming in OK. It's hard for me to see. Just want to welcome everybody to today's webinar for the NHSR community. Um, the September one, and there's one every month. Uh, details about next month will be out on the website. So have a look at that one, if particularly if you've enjoyed this one. Uh, my name is Zoe Turner and I'm pleased, well, more than pleased, terribly excited to um, be joined by Chris Maney, who's Head of Patient Safety Measurement for Improvement at NHS England currently. Uh, before I hand over, because this, this is the exciting part, you don't really want to hear about me necessarily, but you do want to hear about the upcoming NHSR conference that's in November. So if you weren't already aware and already doing a refresh of your um, website to see when the tickets were available at about 11 or so. There's been a bit of a delay. They should be available after this webinar. So you can give this one your full attention and then go back or if you haven't done so register and the uh, tickets will be available at around 2.30 I think. I'll be there refreshing my website. So it's going to be both virtual and in person, in person at Edgbaston Stadium, Birmingham, but we will be able to join, which I will be doing through Zoom uh, on the 16th and the 17th of November. There will be, which is very exciting, a Python track which will be on the 17th of November with speakers from the PyCom community who are also incredibly welcome uh, in the NHSR community. Um, let me just see if there's any other things. There'll be a number of online workshops as well between the 1st and the 25th of November. So it's all happening in November and for some of these the tickets will be restricted by number. So definitely sign up and definitely get on with um, signing up to specific workshops if you're interested. Registration will be available shortly, it says on my, my crib notes, which you know. So today's webinar will be recorded and it will be later available on the website and through the YouTube page. If you have any questions at all throughout, if you could put them in the Teams Live's Q&A function chat, I'll keep an eye on them. I'll interrupt um, at suitable points for Chris and we'll also make sure that we get those uh, sort of asked at some point towards the end. Um, just thinking there's a lot of work on here and at the end of the webinar we hope to use a Mentimeter to gather your feedback about the session because this is one of the first times we've done that. Chris will talk about more about what he's going to be doing but if it's something you know that you have some great feedback about we would really welcome that. Again you can put things in the chat as well so just just find us one way or another to give us this feedback and I will hand over because I was getting to the end of the webinar and we haven't done that. This is what happens when you're just doing crib sheets and you've never done this before. So Chris, welcome. What are Thank you going you to do today much. for us? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Hi, I'm, I'm Chris Maney. Uh, as Zoe said, I'm Head of Patient Safety Measurement for Improvement at NHSE. Uh, the reason she said currently is because I'm starting a new job on Monday. So uh, if anyone wants to get in touch to be the same email address I'm usually on, um, but I'll be with North Central London ICB from Monday. Um, Thanks. So this is a bit of an idea that I suggested because I'd seen some people, um, notably in our community, putting live coded sessions online on things like YouTube or Twitch. I mean, I'm not a huge user of Twitch. I'm sure people could educate me on that. But I think the idea is that people will live code a thing and in much in the way that you would often observe someone doing something you're interested in, you can see their method and how they go about it and um, you know, either learn or contribute or what. Um, so my thought for today was that I have learnt quite a lot from watching other people's coding videos um, and it's really helped me. Um, but I also wanted to be honest and transparent about the coding process, right? So I don't spend all day every day using R anymore, so I'm going to get a ton of things wrong. Uh, I'm going to have to Google some stuff. Uh, I'm going to run some things and forget where commas and brackets are probably. Um, because that's just normal for coding, right? Um, let's let's make sure that we're honest about these sorts of things and it's normal and that anyone who has started coding is as welcome to do this as someone who's been doing it for many years. It'd be fantastic if other people in the community also jump on this. I know we've had a few people volunteer already. It'd be great if we have um, other sessions where people do uh, co uh, run coding sessions for particular things. Um, Chris Speedy, I know, has offered uh, to, to code up a shiny app or something like that. Like, that would be fantastic. It's, that's something I really don't know. We've got other people who've volunteered um, to do sessions on particular things, from visualization and stuff like that as well. So they would be fantastic. Um, so I asked for uh, a data set 
uh, on Slack channel, on our NHSR community Slack channel, which if you're not a member of, do please go and uh, sign up to. I'm afraid I don't have a link to hand. I'd wonder if someone else might be able to share that at some point. Um, but the one that took my fancy and I thought was kind of doable really for half an hour without me getting too lost um, was that Chandan Kaur had um, suggested uh, something to do with ambulance weights. I thought that's kind of useful and kind of interesting and a bit topical. Um, it's not a data set I work on, although it's an NHS E data set. So I don't really know the ins and outs of it. I don't really know where it is. So I'm going to go about finding it, setting up my analysis environment, pulling the data in and seeing what the heck I can do with it. So I will get some stuff wrong. Um, hopefully we'll get some stuff interesting out of it. In the feedback at the end, please tell us if you find this useful. If you don't find it useful, if you think it would be better if we changed a few things, that would be fantastic. And if you want to volunteer, that would be fantastic too. Um, OK, I'm going to share my screen. OK, so I have um, my R Studio open here um, and this is just another piece of work. But what I'm going to do first is set up an environment for analysis. So um, I like to do it this way around, which if I'm using GitHub, which I like to use GitHub because GitHub is for version control, but it's also a really good way of sharing your code in the open. And for those of us who are getting involved with reproducible analytical pipelines and just the whole idea of coding in the open, um, this sort of way of doing things makes a lot of sense. Um, but I like to start with this and create a blank repository on GitHub and clone it down as my starter rather than start my machine and push it up. It just it feels neater. So I'm on GitHub, I'm logged in. I'm going to create a new repository. Hopefully it's not going to take too long. Predictably it does when you know people are watching. Uh, so I'm going to create it under my GitHub account. Um, if we feel like it's useful to transfer it to NHSR, I could do that, but I, I, I don't think that's the right place to start. If we maybe we can collate a, a readme somewhere with links to them. Um, so I'm going to call this NHSR live code uh, description is me having a go at coding in front of y'all. I'm not American, but I'll do. Um, y'all is not exclusively American, I'm sure. Um, right, so um, this is publicly available. Um, you could do one of the initialization things where you can add readmes or git ignores or things like that. Um, uh, I'm not going to do that, but what I am going to do is choose a license because if you don't put a license on it, people don't know and they have to assume that they can't reuse your code. Um, broadly, licensing is a huge rabbit hole to go down and I'm not an expert, but broadly MIT that I've used in the past has been very good for reuse. Um, so I'm going to select MIT. And create the repository and it's dropped the license in there uh, as it is. So what I'm now going to do is clone this down. So I'm using the code button here, HTTPS, um, which is the, um, the, sec the, the, the security set around it. Essentially, you can use SSH connections and other things, but I'll use HTTPS here. So I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to use this link to clone the repository as my starter in RStudio. So I don't know why it's done that. There we go. Right, in the top right here, I am going to create a new project. Everything's a bit slow today. Right, and I'm going to select from version control from Git, and I'm going to paste the repository in here, and I am happy with that name. Uh, so create project. So this is cloning that repository in and setting the remotes, which is the links to that repository. So if you're going to push your code back to it, um, it knows where it's sending it and it has a security arrangement set up. Um, right, so we have this blank, uh, blank working environment now, uh, but it's connected to GitHub already as a starter. So one of the other things I would really, really recommend people use is RENV. So this is a way of managing environments in R. So by environment, I mean what version of R you're using and what packages you're using. But I'm not going to do that first off because part of that process is often installing the packages into that environment. And if I try and install Tidyverse at the beginning of this, we might have to go away for 20 minutes and come back later. 
Um, so I'll do a, a, an RM snapshot at the end, which will snapshot the packets I've used, uh, packages I've used. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go and find my data. So let's say NHS uh, uh, ambulance data. Okay, ambulance quality indicators. That must have been there before. Okay, so what have we got here? Ambulance quality indicators. That sounds about right. Ambulance system indicators and clinical outcomes. So this looks like there's two data sets. So we have uh, previous years. Oh, we've got time series, time series. That might be good. Yeah. Oh, we've got CSV. Yes. So the reason I like CSV rather than XLS, I'm sure loads of you already feel the same and or know this, is that um, if you want to use Excel, that's fantastic. But the temptation in Excel is because you can use fancy formatting to make things look a certain way and present them a certain way. It's actually really difficult to strip that formatting out and to um, load it into another system. Um, CSVs generally have all of this stripped out, he says, hopefully. Um, so I'm just going to try and download this CSV and have a quick look at it before I try and import it into R. Uh, let's open that file. We've got okay. Ooh, that's a bit ugly, isn't it? Um, so it's nice and tidy in some ways. So we've got keys for years and months, region, organization code, and name. So that's useful. Then we've got a whole bunch of keyed indicator -y things. So A0, A1, A2. So there's probably a list of indicator names somewhere, right? So let's go and see if we can find that in a second. Uh, and it looks like it looks like blank cells are uh, filled in with a, f uh, um, a full stop. So that's something we'll probably have to handle when we inst when we load it. OK, so um, let's have a look at what else there is there. So we got uh, current data specification. That looks about right. Let's see. We got. Let's go to the beginning. So what have we got? Sections. Uh, okay. So it looks looks like we've got different focused parts of the indicators that are coded to different things. Um, okay. So we're going to have to. Given we've only got a limited number but amount of time. Let, let's pick something and have a look at that, shall we? Uh, response times. OK, response times is jumping out to me. Let's have a look at response times. Um, OK, response times. So you've got a whole bunch of indicators here. So really, I'd recommend that you read the documentation about indicators. Um, he says not reading the documentation about the indicators because of time. But uh, this looks like it's a definitions of clock starts and clock stops, which is probably probably about how long you count the waiting time for, right? Uh, okay. Oh, that looks like the indicators we might want, right? Let's have total response time, uh, mean response time, and 95th percentile response time. Um, OK, well, I'm going to pick those three. Or are there more total response time? Why is that one different total response time aggregated across all incidents in A9? Well, we're getting, we're getting complicated. So really, I would <laughs> I would advocate fully understanding what the heck you're doing before um, we delve in any further here. But for the purposes of time, we're going to look at indicators A24, 25 and 26, which are about response times. C1 is at category one, so. There's some other supporting information that you should really read if you want to interpret this. Um, but for the purposes of getting something coded and working with it, let's let's pick up on this data uh, and we'll look for it. Before I forget it, let's put the indicators in. So let's um, ging for A24 to A26 from um, was it CIS? NHS England. And I'm going to, for my own records, put the 
Well, I'll tell you what, if we're, if we're loading from the web page, I probably don't need to, to put the link in, right? So let's let's load directly from the web page. So I'm going to copy that link. And I'm going to cheat because cheating can be helpful. So let's go import data set um, from text read R. And let's use RStudio for what it's very helpful for, as well as helping us do R. The wizards can help us understand how to write R that works and doesn't fall over when I hack at it. Uh, okay, so we've got a name. I'm going to call my dataset AE. -E. There we go. I'm terrible at naming things, by the way. You'll probably get lots of A1s, AE2s as we go. Um, AE. Uh, first row contains names. Yes, it does. Delimiters, comma, NA. Ah, okay, so let's handle the NA thing. So, um, hmm. So that's saying what to do with NAs that they can find, which is not what we've got. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. So in fact, they're numbers, aren't they? So, I don't want to have to go through and re renumber all of these. Uh, so you could go through and you could tell it to skip all the ones that you don't want. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just copy this bit of code out and I'm going to chop it down as I go. So there's loads of different ways to um, to do this sort of thing, right? Um, let's go tidyverse. Tidyverse, if you don't use it already, is a suite of data analysis packages that all fit together and they use a certain approach to tidy data analysis where we chain functions together uh, and they have quite a lot of direct, I guess, correlation with SQL if you've used that before. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm loading it in the first instance um, and I'm going to load A and E directly from there. OK, so what it's done is it's interpreted everything up there as character. It's interpreted these double, which is a, um, a numeric um, indicator. So the other thing that I would normally do first, I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph some things in a minute to get my head around it. So I um, I find that I like graphs to have common themes. So I'm going to make sure I use ggplot, which is the, the default that I tend to use, but I'm going to use theme set. Um, so this sets a default theme that's applied to all of your plots. So you don't have to manually write the theme for every plot that you're doing. So it's the theme minimal because that's um, a, a minimal theme that you might expect, um, but I'll add a few things on. Let's do. Um, oh, no, the other thing that I wanted to do is um, Graphics device on Windows is a debate, right? Um, so, and I'm going to restart R before I do this. Um, session restart R. So, Windows default graphic device in RStudio is a bit rubbish, uh, and it doesn't support a bunch of things like custom fonts and other things very easily. Um, so you can use the Cairo graphics device, that's really nice, um, uh, but recently there's the RAG graphics device that's also really good. Um, so if you load that first before you load any of the other packages, um, it generally gives you much nicer graphs and it supports things like um, custom font and it does this, some of the scaling and the raster stuff better. People who understand this more than me could give you a better description, I'm sure, but it gives you better charts using RAG or Cairo. Um, so I'm going to do that first and reload the packages. Uh, but the reason I'm doing that is because um, I like my text to be in Open Sans. So, so I'm going to set a default uh, element text um, where uh, my family, so that's the font family, is Open Sans. Um, I also generally like um, the legend to be at the bottom. Legend position. Um, oh, and remember to use the tooltips, right? That's what they're there for. So legend, so these are all the different things I can change in the legend. Uh, the reason I'm putting legend text in as well is that legend text tends to be a bit big for my liking. 
Uh, sorry, I know this is very, very much pedant of me, but these are things I've just come to set as defaults over time. So I would also advocate if you do this regularly, wrap these into a little function that's your own package and just run that function for setup, right? But I'm explaining, I guess, what I would do here. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can have templates you could cut and paste bits of code in you could you know all those ways to save time but uh, here i'm just writing it so i'm setting default theme minimal but i want it to use open sans with a legend at the bottom and i don't want the uh, legend text to be too big okay so let's load the a e data then okay um so we looked at that before in excel but let's just have a quick look here so i've clicked on that here uh, which opens in view. That's the same thing as as writing this. So all I've done is it sent this this bit of code to the console view a and e. Um, so we've got those um, full stops to deal with. Um, now I can't exactly remember how to um, neatly get rid of all those and turn them into nulls. So let's do. Um, change uh, value to null data frame r replace all null values i don't want to do that uh, maybe that so i'm scanning through tutorials to see if i can remember how to do it um, or I can find a bit of code and that looks very complicated using an apply function. Uh, hang on, so what if I, so I want to filter the data, I don't, uh, let's, that's first principles it, right? Um, A and E, so uh, you square brackets, you use your indexing for um, data frames. So if I do A and E where anything in A and E equals that um let's see if it finds it aha yes okay so that's that's indexed anything out of that data frame that is a, a full stop so let's replace that then shall we i'll just comment this um remove or replace uh, with na so assign to be na is hoping that worked, otherwise we're loading the data set again. Yes, huzzah. OK, brilliant. Um, the reason that's helpful is that um, I now understands them as NAs, not as characters, um, which will be helpful if I start trying to aggregate over anything or do any counts or any any functions that understand them as, as, as numbers. OK, so um the other thing let's go back and look in at it a second and see what organizations are in there okay uh, we've got mixed geographies okay so we've got england regions and providers i can't concisely think of an easy way around that without just picking one of them currently so um let's pick providers so these are all ambulance so it's about so it's about ambulance weights right so these are all ambulance providers so we're not getting 150 odd organizations here by the looks of things we'll, we're getting the ambulance services and the 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 national and regional so let's um let's should we choose where it says ambulance no in fact that's going the wrong way around let's choose it where it starts with an r right that makes more sense so these are the organization codes um, part of the ODS code system. So if you're not an NHS person, uh, organizations in the NHS um, should have unique codes that are all part of the organizational data service. Um, so if you look up ODS portal, you'll find that on NHS digital and it will uh, it'll have a bunch of tools for understanding what organizations are coded as. But uh, generally provider orgs, uh, acute trustee, well, trust type provider orgs are often begin with an R code, not all of them, but most of them. And it looks like all of these do here. So if I just do something logically that looks for the R, we should probably be all right. Oh, and save, save as you go. I haven't saved yet. Um,
Um, OK, so what did we want to do here? So we want to really let's do. Let's call this A and E sub, V for subset, um, which again, terrible naming. Um, also, I like indenting just to make my code more re readable. So uh, my convention is to indent these things because I find it a bit easier to read. Uh, so let's use a little bit of tidyverse type syntax. So I'm going to filter. And with filter, remember we're filtering for what we want to keep, not what we want to exclude um, by default. So unless you negate it. So um, we're filtering what we want to keep in the data set. So um, I want to do stuff that starts with R. So there's some helpers for that. Let's have a look in the help. Um, so it's probably str or something, string something, isn't it? String. There's like select helpers, I think it is. I'm looking for select helpers. So uh, what I'm looking for here is um, you can use things called select helpers, which help you so help us for selecting groups of columns rather than rows that meet that criteria. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, select helpers. Oh, that's unhelpful. starts with that's what I'm looking for. Uh, uh, that rings a bell string starts. OK, so this is from the string R package, which is like a I'll do a disservice here, but it's like a tidyverse compliant implementation of string I functions, um, which are really quite good for dealing with strings. So I want a string starts. So string so use the help to, to help you funnily enough. Um, but that's one of the easiest ways to figure out how to do the, the coding, the stuff you're not sure of. So input vector is strings. So that's the thing that I want to find a pattern in and pattern is the thing I want to find. Uh, and we don't want to negate it. We want it to be true. So I want to say filter where string. Um, what was it? String starts with R, I think. So let's so if I run this and I have a data frame called a sub which has fewer rows, then it's probably a good chance it's doing what I said it would. And it didn't work as OK, so. String starts because it's got an S. And OK, so what do I want? I didn't give it the pattern all I did, so I gave it just the pattern and not the string. So I need to give it the column I want that to work on, don't I? So what's the column called? Uh, for, so I should say that if you don't specifically name arguments, I will assume that they are following the pattern in the help. Um, so if you wanted to do them the other way around, you could explicitly name them and call that um, string or so this, this is pattern, isn't it? Pattern equals that, but I need to tell it what the string it needs to look in is first. So string equals what's the column called? Oh, non compliant names. Um, if you have names with spaces or illegal type characters, you can get around it with the back tick. Um, that's generally ours way of dealing with that. So org code. Let's see if that works this time. Hey, OK, brilliant. All right, let's have a look at that because eyeball in it is my way of checking generally. Yep. OK, that's doing what we needed to do. OK, so that's that is selected. Um, oh, I said the wrong thing before this where rows meet rather than column headers. That's I said the wrong thing. But we've selected we filtered anyway, so what we were looking for was. Um, select. Organization level. Based on org codes starting R. I'm a big fan of commenting your scripts. Um, I would also say it's helpful to split into separate scripts if you're doing different things. So if uh, I wanted to do load and prep and then I wanted to do charts, maybe I'd do my charts on the next bit, depending on how you want to logically divide it up. But <laughs> we're not that well thought out for today, so we'll just carry on. 
OK, uh, so now we've got that. Let's try and have a look at the um, the A24 indicator, right? So that was the first one, wasn't it? A24. Uh, now you could try it. Should I be ambitious and try and do a chart for all three in one go with a facet? Maybe. OK, if I'm going to do that, then I need to cut all the other, I need to select the columns I need um, but I need to um, pivot it so it's in long form rather than wide form because um, ggplot will expect that for the facet, expect it to be in groups. Uh, okay, let's 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 try that. Um, he says optimistically. Um, I probably also want to give it a date as well because currently I've got year and month and year and month, although it's logical, is a little bit unhelpful. So let's try and create a badly named data frame where I solve some of these. OK, so. Firstly, before I assign it. Um, that's wrong because what I mean is this. So we're going to start with A and E sub. I'm sure there are tidier ways to do this, but you know, we'll start here. And what we want to do is mutate. So mutate in tidyverse, deep layer syntaxes, create a new column. Um, let's call it DT for date. Um, so is it as date? As capital D for date. As date. And I want then, so I want the year first, don't I? Uh, oh no, I need to put, I need, to, so it needs to convert it from a string. So I need to paste it, don't I? Um, let's use paste zero because that's a version of paste that doesn't add any spaces in between. Um, paste year uh, dash uh, and then we want month. Dash zero one. Um, missing a bracket uh, and I'm going to test that because if that bit falls over the next bit won't work so it's a straight s okay let's try that well that's irritating isn't it because I can't see it um just for Ease of viewing sake, I'm going to select just the DT column and we'll try that again. OK, that sort of looks right. He says optimistically, so you've got 2017-08, so 081, it's in date format. I'm going to chalk that up as working. Um, OK, so I probably want to chop this down now, right? So select, so we want DT. Um, we probably... And again, just because I'm wired like this, I quite like to put them on separate rows unless I've got loads of them. Um, org code, um, what's it called? Name. And so I could just write A24, A25, A26. But let's stick with the idea of the selection helpers. Um, so I think there is like a, a, a number type range thing. Um, so what is it? Range. I'm trying to navigate a bit of help finding it any of uh, a num range that's what i'm looking for which is a range like these okay so we can use that we can translate that to our a24 etc so let's find that num range okay num range prefix okay so that's going to be our a right i guess and range 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 yep yeah okay so we're probably not saving a huge amount of characters here, but like 
if you're doing it for a lot more columns than this, you might want to consider doing something like num range. So a prefix is the first thing it expects. That's going to be A, capital A, and then range. Uh, how do I enter range? Range is a sequence of integers. So 24 to 26 we had at the top, I think, wasn't it? Yep. Form. I always do that. From. OK, so let's see if that works. My brackets match up. Um, oh, yeah, a nice thing about RStudio does, um, I think other editors do that as well. I'm pretty sure Visual Studio does, but is the rainbow brackets thing. Uh, at first, I didn't quite see why I might want that, but it's really, really helpful to have the colour matched brackets so you can see when you're missing one. Uh, let's try that then. OK. So. Hey, OK, so now we've got um, those indicators and we seem to have big gaps. OK, the gaps seem to be a lot at the beginning, so I wonder if organisations are either not submitting or they've changed names. Let's plot it and see. Let's do that, yeah. Um, oh, I didn't pivot it, did I? So um, you could just uh, tack the pivot on the end here, but I'm going to just for ease of showing what I'm doing. We'll call that subset and then I'll do. Uh, pivot for plotting. Again, I am terrible at naming things. I wonder if I talk to myself like this when I'm doing coding on my own. Probably do, right? Bound to. Just trying to speak my internal monologue. Um, right. What do we want to do here? So I want to use pivot longer, right? Pivot longer, but I also want help because I always, always forget how to do pivot longer. OK, so pivot longer, so I need to tell it what data to pivot. Well, the data argument sent, so I need to tell it what columns to apply it to. Um, let's use the start with thing again, right? So I'm going to say calls equals uh, starts with A. Uh, do I need to add anything else? Let's just, let's check whether this works first. Because sometimes all the defaults are kind of there to help you and they might just work. OK, this might do the job. OK, so we've got per date, per organisation. We've got a value and a name for each indicator. I think that's doing what I want. Pretty sure. OK, uh, but hang on, hang on. Value, OK, value is still um, a character, so that's not going to play nice. So let's also add a mutate on the end here. Uh, value equals as dot numeric value. That is not what I wanted to do because the double equals is the is um, an arithmetic statement, so it interpreted it as a logic statement of checking whether or not. Yeah, two equals was the wrong call there because it created a new column where it said whether or not it was equals to is a true or false rather than recoding it. OK, um, ooh, we're coming a bit close on time now, so I'm going to try and bash out a chart, I think, before um, before I have to finish. Yeah. So let's go with any piv one. Uh, GG plot. So what I'm going to try and do is use my aesthetics here to say um, y is going to be the value. So the column that we just created, the numeric one called value. 
Um, X is going to be DT, so we're going to plot over time with the value on our Y axis. Um, and let's use color to um, differentiate the organization. So let's do color by, um, let's do org code. So I'm going to just do, let's do points and lines, shall we? Uh, the other thing that I need to do though is the facet, otherwise I'm going to end up with um, them all plotted on the same one. So by facet I mean like panels of the graph. So we've got three indicators, A24, 25, 26. Uh, so I probably want a chart for each one of those. So let's do that, shall we? Let's do um, facet grid. And I want rows, I think, do I? Or no, I want columns because I want them across the screen here. Yeah. Calls. Now, I used to get really confused with this because it used old facet in ggplot used to be like an arithmetic formula, like a model. Whereas now it involves like tidy select type things and it's got helpers. So you, um, I think you need to use vars for it. Um, so what's it called? It's all uh, name, isn't it? That column's called name. Uh, and how else can we make this nice? So let's um, use a scale. Oh, hang on. Back at the beginning, there's a, a nice package called scales, which is sort of part of Tidyverse. I think it's just been added to Tidyverse. I don't know, but I use scales quite a lot because it's got some nice scales functions for what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to change the Y continuous one uh, to the label value. I'm going to use the co comma function, which just adds a comma after every thousand and makes it a bit more reasonable. Um, and scale X is going to be date. Uh, do we want, so I want, think I want date labels. Uh, oh yeah, let's consider our date break, shall we? So we do date breaks equals three months. And date labels. Um, so th this is, you might, you kind of need to know how to code date formats here for this, but um, what I'm going to do is B, which I think is date month name and lowercase y, which is the two digit end of the year code. Watch this fall over now. Um, oh, that looks horrible. OK. So firstly, it looks like there's a massive scale difference, which would make sense given the indicators, right? Um, so <laughs> let's back this up, shall we? <laughs> So let's go filter. I'm just going to pin this back to A24 so we've got something that actually looks vaguely OK, All right? Uh, so we want where name equals A24. So I'm just further filtering this. Um, now I'm going to knock the facet off because I don't need it now because I've just got one indicator. Did I mean double equals? Yeah. <laughs> so I've done that both ways now. Uh, OK, so now we have something that looks slightly horrible, but you know, it's a start. Um, let's add a bit of theme to tidy this up a little bit. Theme um, axis text uh, X. Elements text. Angle 45. OK, that's slightly easier to read. Uh, and the org codes, that would probably be easier if it was org name, right? But they're probably going to be really big, so they're probably going to go off the page. Um, but we can see the comma function is doing this thing here, so it's, it's inserting those commas after the three 
digits. So I really like that on continuous scale things. I think it just helps. Um, so what have we got going on here? It looks like we might have a big COVID bump, right? Um, February 21. We've got, uh, yeah, so we've got March 20. So that looks like it's probably the first year period. I presumably do uh, waiting time and call time must have dipped, presumably from. So there's a, there was a broad change in activity where lots of stuff that was less urgent wasn't going on. Um, but obviously there was an increase in COVID patients, right? Uh, and then who is that? That is a big one, isn't it? Not to point the finger at anyone. RX7. Oh, go on, let's let's name them just because it's all for big data and I'm not accusing anyone of doing anything badly, but I want to, I can't tell from the trust code who they are. And there we go. Predictably, that's gone off the page. That's, so it could also reduce the font size. So we'll go legend, text, element, text. Size equals six. Is that too small to read now? Maybe. Use the zoom button here. OK. Uh, so that looks like it is Northwest Ambulance Service. It, it, I mean, it doesn't doesn't help me at all to know that necessarily because you don't know they they are different size regions, they have different um, setups. But um, I can't really get any deeper than that in the half an hour or so than we've been doing. Obviously, you would take this a lot further because a you would understand the data you're looking at because I haven't spent any time reading the documents. I might be making horrendous errors, but it was about the process really of getting the data in, chopping it around, doing the tiniest bit of cleaning just to get it usable. Uh, We've done a little bit of shaping of, of just reformatting things and cutting it down to an indicator and then drawn a plot to get an initial feel for how this time series is going. Um, you might want to do things like put proper titles on your plots and use uh, colour scales that are maybe consider colour blindness and things like that. So the Viridis um, colour palette is a good one for that. So let me just show you that very quickly before I finish. So I'll add scale. Uh, Viridis uh, and it's just, so because it's um, categorical things it's discrete so Viridis D, D is discrete, C is continuous. So you should notice that change now but you don't because what have I done? Because I used fill rather than colour. I'm going to use the American spelling because I know that's there. OK, so you've seen that change and um, for those of you who've used um, some of the plotting packages in Python, you might know that this is often a default there, but it's often I think it's a default in some. In, in many plotting um, packages, but I thought it was a default in ggplot, but obviously not. Um, but you can see it's a different color palette here um, and you can change them around for all sorts of different things. Um, I'm sort of rambling a little bit now, um, but what I am going to do um, is. Just before I finish, I'm going to commit this to Git. So I'm going to do uh, Git add. And I'm going to use auto switch for all because I'm lazy. Um, you'll see in the Git window up here, it should now, if I refresh this, say, yep, there we go. Uh, they're all staged. Now I'm going to do Git commit. Terminal's been a bit weird. Um, the message is initial script from webinar session. Oh, it didn't like that because uh, I spelt stuff wrong. Oh, I didn't put a space. Ugh, OK. Um, the realities of doing data analysis because I've updated my R version and the associated Git version, it seems to have lost who I am. So I need to reset who my credentials before I can do that properly. Um, I will do that uh, after this session. But the other thing I said that we should really do is use rnv 
which encapsulates the environment. So I'm going to do rnv. Um, uh, if you're using a package but you're not loading it, if you use two um, colon operators, it, it uses the um, function directly from the package rather than loading the whole package. So rnv um, init is initialize. So it should now scan through that and go, ah, you're using tidyverse, ah, you're using this, that, the other, and it will commit them to um, memory, into, sorry, to cache. So it's done that there. And it will create a lock file with those in there. So it's it's worked out all the packages that are associated with what I've been using uh, and committed them in there. And if you use more, then you use rm snapshot to update the snapshot each time if you added more packages in. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I will resolve the um, the Git problem and I'll get this posted shortly after this. Uh, well, I've got a few more meetings this afternoon, but it'll be done and up by the end of the day. Um, thank you for everybody's time. If there's questions, I'm very happy to take them. Um, I will stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much. That was uh, putting you on the spot, really, because coding in front of people can be really hard. And I was on there to, to show that somebody was watching and paying attention, but that can also be distracting. So I hope I wasn't too distracting. No, that was helpful. But, Thanks. The, but there were some um, there was a comment about that, like, well done for doing that. Um, the other comment was about maybe um, people contributing the ways that they can do it because mm. everybody's got different ways of doing it. So I wondered if when you get your GitHub up and running, maybe we could get that onto the demos and how to's and then mm. people can contribute in yeah. a kind of like hackathon, like I would do this or how does this work or we can keep this conversation going because this is Certainly. really good. Yeah. And also before we um, started, we joked about a part two. I certainly uh. did. I think, you know, that might be good, taking this a bit further because you mm. covered a lot so much in such a short amount of time but i could only Maybe do that with being do. a surface awareness of the the data that i was putting in <laughs> and i think I, I, what i would say is that if you were doing this for real you would have spent a lot more time knowing the data set before you know wildly throwing it into a plot because i don't really understand what i'm plotting there it looked good anyway so um for everybody in the Thank audience you. if you've got any questions i think there's one that's coming i'll just check but there's um in the q a there's a mentee meter uh, survey so please do have a look at that and give us some feedback but there are other ways of finding us as well nhsr slack um, maybe on github as well you can do the issues and mm. maybe suggesting other things that we can do as well or, or you know if you're familiar with that data set what would you do with it is the next question yeah please um, educate me if you know this data set very well like take the repository um you know uh, fork the repository close the repository change it sort it out do it better but the other thing I, I just wanted to add as well is that I've, I've been coding a bit, but you still learn from how other people approach these problems and subjects. So there's loads of like tips and tricks in there. That I was like, oh, that's really good. So um, thank you so much. I think okay. that's that's it for the questions um, that came in. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming today, uh, for coming and sitting with us or maybe catching up later as well on YouTube if you do that. Hopefully see people in the next few months as well. That, it, details will be out on the website and if you have any ideas yourself or you want to do what Chris has done bravely today Please but do. you know it was really fascinating one of the comments that did come through and I forgot to mention it is seeing mistakes googling searching this is how we code it's not knowing everything off the top of your head you know a lot <laughs> you really know a lot but there's a few this things is the stuff that... I do all the time if I was to go and start coding a shiny app it would take me three days to to simply get it working because I never do that yeah, practice makes perfect. But as many times as people do pivot longer and pivot wider, I'm all and I, I didn't know you could do that where you just put in one bit and see if it works. Mm. And it does. Oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm forever trying to check the small fragments because it tends to tends to stop me messing up later and being lost. Yeah, but um, for those who are interested or came in later, uh, NHSR conference registration should be opening up in about half an hour's time. So um, I hope everybody will keep an eye on that. Details will be on the Slack and Twitter as well if you're on there. And um, we'll catch up with everybody in the future, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.